And I'm delighted to be here. I'm really just the warm-up act for our two great star speakers this evening, and I hope we'll have a really good uh, session. And so I'd like to add my welcome to this Open Minds event, which I think is a really important kind of event uh, to have at the moment, because uh, in our society and indeed across the world, we're in a time of profound change. We see a lot of political change, a lot of economic change, social change, technological and, and ecological change. We've got um, all sorts of things, uh, uh, climate change, migration issues, uh, changing patterns of, of crime, uh, loss of trust in politicians and bankers, greater blame and skepticism of public services. We're actually dealing with uh, quite a lot. So I think events like tonight, which um, are trying to tackle some big global issues, are really important. I'm not sure we're going to be able to solve crime in an hour, but we'll um, do the best we can. And the OU, as Susan has said, is trying to address some of these uh, uh, big uh, problems and challenges that we face globally by really investing in areas of research uh, and there's a number of these. They include space science and innovation and um, international development. And the one that I'm particularly involved in is the one called citizenship and governance. And we're trying there to address some really big issues about what does it mean to be a citizen in today's uh, societies and how do people uh, claim uh, citizenship. Uh, we see a lot of struggles around that, around the, the Middle East and people coming to the UK, for example, uh, and to other parts of Europe. Um, and also thinking about the changing relationships between the market, the, market, the state, and civil society, uh, different ways of um, uh, governing our society, making decisions, trying to create value for the public sphere. Uh, and also thinking about public leadership as well as a way to mobilize the attention and resources and values and purposes of people in order to produce a society which is hopefully uh, fair and um, uh, prosperous and, and has well-being uh, at its core. So there are a lot of issues for public leaders uh, whether those, they are elected politicians, whether they're professionals and uh, public servants, or whether they're civic and communi community activists. So that's um, very much the area that citizenship and governance is involved in. And as part of that work, we are really delighted and excited by the work that we're doing uh, in the field of policing. And I'm just going to um, show you just the front page of our new uh, website for the Centre for Policing Research and Learning. Nick, I am going to mention CYPER in a minute, so don't worry. Um, uh, we're collaborating over a, a number of things. Um, so as Susan mentioned, we've set up this centre to look at policing. Now, policing is much wider than just crime. It's also about um, public order, public safety, uh, a sense of confidence in society. Um, and we're working with 12 police forces in the UK, in the UK uh, large ones like the Metropolitan Police and Greater Manchester, uh, much smaller and mainly rural ones like Gloucestershire or, or Dorset, uh, and many in between, and including ones, uh, the Northern Ireland Police Force and one of the Welsh forces. And that gives us a really good opportunity to do research in a variety of settings uh, which is uh, really important to us. So we can really test out what works uh, in different contexts, in different settings, in different organisational cultures. Uh, so that's really important to what we're doing. We're working in a highly collaborative way. So our aims, um, very like Cyper actually, are, are to uh, work with uh, police, being questioning, being challenging, but also working shoulder to shoulder to really try and understand what are the problems that the police face, that communities face, uh, and thinking uh, uh, about those, designing research, and then thinking about how you use research as well. 
My background is as an organizational psychologist, so I'm actually really interested in how ideas and evidence, research evidence, is used in practice and doesn't just uh, stay as uh, fancy words in policy documents. So the work we're doing through the centre with these 12 forces, uh, we're looking at um, three strands of work around education, research, and uh, knowledge exchange. And I think this one will be around uh, the education, where we've got five stepping stones to try and help police in their professional development. We've got things, uh, we've got a whole range of um, uh, opportunities, if you like, from small bite-sized pieces of learning, perhaps 10 minutes, perhaps 10 hours, right through to degree courses uh, and PhDs for, for the police. And we've now got five uh, police officers and staff to undertaking uh, PhDs through the, through the centre. Uh, but in addition, we do a lot of research. And we've got, I'm very pleased that the centre is multidisciplinary. It's really important if we're going to look at big global challenges that we stop being in particular disciplines and start working in an interdisciplinary way because many of the problems of society don't fall in particular disciplines. They require uh, a multidisciplinary or an interdisciplinary uh, approach. So we've got psychologists, sociologists, criminologists, engineers, computer scientists, all sorts of people. I'm working on a range of things from cybercrime. Uh, we'll hear about Haley's project in, in social media um, and, and technology um, and uh, leadership for public value. And we're also doing work in knowledge exchange as well, and, and we have secondments from police officers and staff. Um, I also wanted to mention CYPER as well because we're very pleased that the Open University is involved with uh, CYPER. And it's interesting that it's a mirror image type of consortium because uh, it's uh, 13 or 14 universities working with one police force, whereas the centre that I've just spoken about is 12 police forces and one university and uh, works in, uh, with many of the same interests and we look forward to doing much more work together. Um, I want to move on to introduce our speakers and to think about this issue about tackling crime. Maybe we should talk about tackling rather than solving crime because I'm not sure it'll ever go away. But we're uh, in an interesting period, I think, where the formal uh, statistics are going down in relation to crime. Uh, but actually the nature of crime is changing and police are having to be more involved in a range of different um, uh, activities, including cybercrime, counter-terrorism, and so on. And of course, there still is traditional crime, and, and Karen might say perhaps depressingly too much uh, uh, similar crime to, to the past. So uh, I think some of the challenges of changing crime, the changing technology, which is actually um, influencing the relationship between the police and the public uh, and with communities. So we're going to hear two really interesting talks. Um, I know both of their work quite well, so I'm really delighted to be able to introduce each of them. One a practitioner, one an academic, both really committed to tackling real problems and issues uh, in Scottish uh, policing and Scottish crime. Uh, I'll introduce them both uh, now uh, and then invite Karen to, to come to the podium. I think a number of you will know Karen as ha the person who set up the Violent Crime Reduction Unit here in Scotland. And there have been any number of uh, newspaper articles about her and, and what she's managed to achieve here. But still, I think um, some way to go, she would probably feel, in terms of um, Scottish society. And I gather she's just taking on um, uh, football crowds and football sectarianism as, a, as an issue. But you don't have to talk about that if you don't want to. <laughs> um, we're also very pleased that Karen, uh, it, last year, accepted an honorary degree from the Open University. And we hope she feels, as we do, that that's real recognition of the work that she's been able to achieve for public service. So thank you very much, Karen. Uh, just before you come up, to also introduce Hayley, 
uh, Dr. Haley Ness, who works for the Open University and is a staff tutor uh, involved in uh, creating uh, teaching materials and learning materials, working also with tutors and students, focused particularly on Scotland, but also across all four nations, and with a background in uh, forensic psychology and forensic cognition, very interested in face recognition. Uh, and um, we've just been having a, a very fascinating topic about super recognizers, who are people who are particularly good at uh, recognizing faces. But what she's going to be talking about tonight is um, the public's use of social media and how that's affecting uh, some police procedures. So I think we've got a stunning uh, lineup, and I need to get out of here to give them all the time that we, we can. So, Karen, over to you.